right now. A life-threatening and dangerous situation is going to unfold and is unfolding right now in the countries of Jamaica, Haiti, and Cuba. At the moment, Hurricane Melissa is a Category 1 hurricane with 92-mile-per-hour winds and a central pressure of 974 millibars. Now, this storm is going to intensify significantly with rapid intensification overnight tonight and into the morning on Sunday. Even into Monday, it will continue to intensify to a Category 5 hurricane with 161-mile-per-hour winds and 196-mile-per-hour wind gusts. Now, this storm is going to dump tons of rain on Jamaica. As you can see on the satellite loop, it's not moving very far. And when I said it's going to be a Category 5 on Tuesday, you're probably thinking, Tuesday? Look at how close it is to the Category 5 marker. How is it going to take that long? Because the storm is barely moving. It's locked between two high-pressure systems that are barely moving, and it's going to stay in the same place for a very long time. Now, this is going to be a very dangerous situation for Jamaica, and it's already looking like it's going to undergo very rapid intensification. As you can see, this cloud has exploded right here on the satellite loop and is wrapping around the parent low, and this will probably develop an eye overnight tonight and become a Category 4, maybe Category 5, tomorrow by tomorrow evening. Right now, you can see the hurricane right here in the X on this map. It is going to hit Jamaica probably around 2 a.m. on Tuesday. So as you can see, it's not moving a lot. This is three, four days from now, and this is really just going to park around the Jamaica area and dump a ton of rain. And the wind field is also pretty big. As you see, the tropical storm wind field spans all the way over here. And this is the reason we have a tropical storm warning and hurricane watch for Haiti and some of the Dominican Republic because the wind field is so strong. And that's why you also have a hurricane warning in Jamaica. Now, this is going to probably directly impact Jamaica in the coming days, around Tuesday, Tuesday morning, very early morning, even into Monday night. You're going to start seeing the real big impacts. And then for Cuba, you guys are going to maybe see a landfall again on Wednesday, early morning Wednesday. That's why you guys have a hurricane watch at the moment. And that's why there's a hurricane watch, because obviously the wind field is going to be super big. And you guys could see hurricane force winds, tropical storm force winds before y'all even see an impact, maybe even half a day out. So 12 hours before you get landfall, you guys are going to be seeing some wind field. Now, since this storm is not going to be moving a lot, Jamaica could get up to 40 inches of rain in this four day rainfall um, forecast. You can see in Jamaica right where this arrow is, there's a 30 plus inch area where you guys could see tons of rain over over 750 plus millimeters of rain. Even the 20 to 30 inch range spans a lot of Jamaica, some of Haiti and even the 16 to 20 in most of mainland Jamaica. So is the uh, 12 to 16. So this is going to be a lot of rain in a long period of time plus storm surge. So anyone in these areas you guys need to watch out for a lot of rain. You're going to have rain, wind, storm surge, and all things like that. Right now on the Jamaica radars, you can see these outer bands kind of hitting the area right now. Possible tornadic spin-ups, always possible with these outer bands. But the main eye you can kind of see even on these Jamaica radars so far out, you can start to see the hurricane approaching right there. And we go to the longer um, like radar you can start to see even more defined eye right there. This is a radar loop of some images in the last hour. You can see this. I don't know why some of them are not loading, though. Also, the Cuba radar supports this, seeing, as you can see, some outer bands kind of hitting the area in the Cuba radar, and you can't see that eye because it's probably the beam is super high in the sky that you can't see the hurricane so far low, especially that far, but you can definitely see some of the outer bands right there. Now, for tropical storm force wind arrival times, Jamaica, you are already possibly seeing some right now, some areas closer to the southeast coast of Jamaica. You could be seeing some winds right now, some tropical storm force winds at that. Now, those winds will continue to strengthen overnight tonight and into the day on Sunday. But now, Cuba's in the risk and Haiti's in the risk on Sunday at 8 p.m. There could be tropical storm force winds knocking on y'all's doors. 
even into the Dominican Republic on Monday at 8 a.m. There could be some more, so rough morning there in Cuba. Now, by Tuesday, some of these winds are already into the Bahamas and uh, taking over um, Dominican Republic. So this is going to be a widespread wind field event, and this is the reasonable time of tropical storm force winds that will happen. Now, for rip currents, the National Hurricane Center does not put out rip current statements in risks for Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, or the Bahamas. So any of these countries in the black circle, they do not. So we're going to use the Florida and Puerto Rico ones and talk about those and kind of substitute them. So for the east coast of Florida, you can see a red area. That's the high risk for rip currents. Now, I'm not an expert on rip currents, but just be aware that those are out there and follow your local weather service and weather office, their, av their advisories and stuff and what they say to do. But this is a very high risk for some rip currents, especially on the eastern coast and southern area of Florida, where it says no date. I'm sure that is pretty high rip current risk. Now, for the Gulf Shores, Alabama, Panhandle, Florida area, another high risk is labeled there. And that is a pretty high risk. Again, like I said, follow your local office and be aware that these are out there and they're pretty, they're pretty bad, especially if you're in a high risk. Now, for Puerto Rico, they're in a moderate risk and some in low. Now, this is not going to be as bad as it's probably been and it's going to continue to be. This is probably its lull kind of right now. It might get back up to a high risk, but just same thing for this area. Stay aware that those are out there and check in with your local office and everything to make sure that there's not any upgrades in anything and stay tuned to a news outlet. Now, also, you can see another moderate risk in the Corpus Christi area, the uh, east coast area of southern Texas. The same thing. Keep in your local office. I'm not an expert. Be aware that there is a rip current risk and just follow your news area and just make sure that there's not any upgrades and that you know about them. So where is this storm going to go? Right now, we're looking at the Hafis A model for Melissa on the Tropical Tidbits website. We're going to track this going forward. So around, this is right now, around uh, our time right now, wherever you're watching this right now, when this video is posted, it is 6.30 Jamaica time. It is October 25th. But tracking this forward, we're going to see rapid intensification drops of 20 millibars in 12 hours. So very dro a drop of a lot of pressure. And that's going to signify a strong eye wall and a strong outer band, stronger outer bands. As you can see, it's kind of messy and it doesn't really move a lot. But in the next couple hours, it's going to really strengthen over the next 12, 15 hours. Now, going into Mon Sunday morning, not Monday, around 18Z or 1 p.m. on Sunday, it's a 955 millibar low. It's really kind of picked itself up and really became a classic hurricane shape. This could be a category three, category four around this time frame. Now going forward into Monday, this is around 9Z Monday or 3 a.m. on Monday. This is a 940 millibar low, probably a category five, if not well over. This is a very strong hurricane. And this, you can start to see the impacts on Jamaica. You can see the outer bands are going to hit it. You see the, these like out, this like, kind of outer eye wall, so to speak, on this model, kind of hits it. And we go forward in time. It kind of dives even a little bit south, kind of. It doesn't move at all during this time period. And you guys are getting intermittent heavy rain patches in Jamaica and tons of rain. This even strength strengthens down to a 921 millibar low. This is well over Category 5 status. And this could be a very strong Category 5 with over 200 mile per hour wind gusts. Now this is at 18Z Monday. This is probably going to be around three o'clock, four o'clock on Monday. Now we go forward. This is going to make landfall about 3 a.m., 4 a.m. on Tuesday. And then this is gonna go ahead and pass through Jamaica by midday on Tuesday. And you guys are still getting hit by that eye wall at 18Z on Tuesday or 3 p.m. on Tuesday. So this is going to make landfall in Cuba. It kind of gets a little break in the waters, kind of gets strengthened again. It's going to make landfall as a Category 3 or 4 on Cuba, 
And like I said, it hasn't really moved a lot in these next, this is the 29th, this is Wednesday. That time frame from Wednesday, from today, Saturday, to Wednesday, and it moving this slow is going to allow for tons of rain to be dumped on these countries and areas alike in the ocean. And Haiti's going to get hit. Jamaica's going to get hit. Cuba's going to get hit by possibly 20 inches or more of rain. Now, tracking this forward again, it's going to hit the Bahamas around 15Z on Wednesday. And this is probably about 12, 11 a.m. on Wednesday. And this is going to continue to move off out to the Atlantic, and we shouldn't have to worry about anything anymore. Now, the spaghetti models also agree with this, showing that these, this is basically all the model runs tracks of the central pressure moving forward, and most of them show it's going this. And you really want to look at the, when you look at these spaghetti models, you want to look at the consensus, basically. You don't want to see the, out, I mean, the outliers could be modeled. They could be true, but most of them are going to model out toward the sea and like this when you have a consensus like this. So these three outliers are very unrealistic and could not happen. Also, be aware on the eastern seaboard, just so you guys know. I'm not telling you you guys are fully in the clear. You need to watch this. Don't, be per don't get prepared. Don't be placing sandbags out there. But just know that this storm is out there in the Atlantic, and you need to watch for any changes. But it is severely unlikely that this will make landfall on even Canada. It looks like it's just going to be a fish storm after it hits the Bahamas, and that's really going to be it for its life cycle. Well, if you guys enjoyed that video, make sure to hit a like, hit that subscribe button, support a brother out, you know, trying to grow up the subscriber count and everything so we can hit 1,000 subscribers so I can get monetized and keep bringing good content to you guys. I'm going to try to get my next video out on Sunday or Monday my new mini doc for the Enderlin EF5. I'm really excited for this video. It's probably been one of the coolest things I've done in a while on this channel. And then we will return to more hurricane winter kind of videos. And I will continue to make these mini docs if you guys really enjoy them. All right. Well, that's going to be it, y'all. Thanks for watching.